Hi everyone. Today we're gonna talk about Oracle Data Guard Basic Concepts Part 1. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand and describe the following Oracle Data Guard Process Architecture, Types of Data Guard Services, Types of Standby Databases, and Data Guard Protection Modes. When you configure Oracle Data Guard in your Oracle database, you would enable the following components. LNS Process, which stands for Log Writer Network Service Process. And this one runs in the primary database. And RFS Process, which stands for Remote File Service, and it runs on the standby database. And you would also have standby redolog files and they exist in the standby database. This is a typical structure of an Oracle database. You would have an SGA in the memory and a log writer process running, which reads from redo buffer and saves into online redo log files. You would have also the archiver process running and reading from the online redo log and writing into archived redo log files. When you have Oracle Data Guard configured in your database, you would have in the primary database an extra process called LNS, which stands for, as I have just said, Log Writer Network Service Process. This process reads from the redo buffer, exactly the same way Log Writer is doing. It reads from the redo log buffer the redo data. It then sends this redo blocks to the standby database. On the standby database side, RFS is the process which receives the redo blocks from the LNS. So the communication is between the LNS on the primary database and RFS on the standby database. RFS will receive the redo blocks and saves them into standby redo log files. Although standby redo log files are technically optional, in almost every production system they are there and configured in a data guard environment. You would also have apply services. A process which is responsible for serving as apply services will read from the standby redo log files and apply the redo logs into the standby database. So this architecture maintains the replication, the unidirectional replication from the primary database to the standby database. And as it's clear, it relies on sending the redo log from the primary database to the standby database. When you have data guard in action, you would have the following services. Redo transport services, which is responsible for sending the redo blocks from the database, uh, from the primary database to the standby database. Apply services, which is responsible for applying the received redo blocks into the standby database and role transitions. We'll talk about the first two in this lecture. We will talk about role transitions in the next lecture. Apply services can be configured to work in one of the following two methods, redo apply or SQL apply. When you configure your data guard to use redo apply in its operation, the process which is responsible for applying the, re the received redo blocks in the standby database is called MRP which stands for Media Recovery Process. Media Recovery Process will, will read the received blocks and apply them on the standby database. When you configure your data guard environment to use Redo Apply, the standby database will have exactly the same physical structure as the primary. The same table spaces, the same data files, exactly the same physical structure. MRP process will manage the recovery session. We mean by the recovery session is the apply, the apply process itself, the apply operation, the process of applying the received redo blocks into the standby database. The standby database can be accessed for read-only operations. All DML transactions that, that take place in the primary database will be replicated in the standby database. This is important to understand because in the 
other type of uh, apply, which is SQL apply, this is not true. Not all the, some DMLs could be skipped. When you use redo apply in your data guard configuration, we named, we call the standby database as physical standby database. This is how we name the standby database when we use redo apply, physical standby database. So all what you need to understand here is when you configure a, st a physical standby database, the database can be accessed for read only operations and it has exactly the same physical structure as of the primary database. In real life, this is the best option for uh, disaster recovery solution because the standby database is an exact copy of the primary database. When you use SQL apply services in your data guard environment, the process which is responsible for uh, implementing the apply services is called LSP or logical standby process. Now, what is the difference between LSP and MRP? LSP converts, transforms the redo, the redo blocks that it reads from the standby redo log and change them into SQL statement and it will then re-execute the, the SQL statement on the standby database. So there is a further processing involved in uh, involved here. The LSP will not read the block and uh, the redo block and apply it as is. It will convert it first into SQL statement and then execute it. So when you use SQL apply, it transforms the received redo data into SQL statement and the standby database in this case should not be necessarily of the same physical structure as the primary database. It can have more, for example, uh, table spaces. A good advantage of using this type of uh, apply services is the standby database allows the clients to perform read-write operations. So clients can create their own tables and they can, and they can read and write onto them. This is very useful in, in practical life for BI solutions because usually BI solutions create their own objects uh, during their operations. This cannot be used with uh, physical standby database because physical standby database doesn't allow us to uh, write or to create our own objects in the database. The drawback on the other side is more extra processing is involved because the process should transform the, rec the received redo data into SQL statement and the SQL statement should be re-executed. So <clears throat> obviously this will take more uh, processing in the standby database system. Another disadvantage is, not, is that not all data types are supported. Some data types like VRA are not supported when you use SQL apply in your data guard configuration. We will talk in details about that in a later lecture. However, the DBA can manage this. Um, they can, he can uh, do some code to deal with unsupported data type. But unfortunately, this means the DBA will have more effort to be done on the database side. When you configure SQL apply in a standby database, we call the, that database as logical standby database. So we have physical standby database and logical standby database. Logical standby database has the advantage that it allows read-write operations. It, sh it shouldn't be necessarily uh, the same uh, physical structure as uh, of the primary database, but its uh, drawback is it doesn't support all the data types. So in conclusion, we have two types of standby databases. Physical standby database, which is used for read-only operations. Logical standby database, which allows read-write operations. This, I'm repeating this because this is uh, very important to understand. Having said that, we can say that physical standby database is ideal for DR solution. Logical standby database can be used for BI solutions. In the incoming lectures, you will learn more about, about the features of each of those data, databases. The good news is in a data guard configuration, you can have more than one standby database. So you can have one primary database and one physical standby database used for DR, another logical standby database used for BI solutions. Redo transport services can be of two methods, synchronous or asynchronous. Both of them have the same responsibility, which is to transport the Redo blocks from the primary database to the standby database. 
when you use synchronous redo transport uh, in your data guard configuration, the primary database will not commit a transaction until it receives an acknowledgement from the standby database that the redo block has been received and saved. So this happens to every transaction. None of them will be committed until the redo block is received and saved by the standby database. Now, what's the advantage of this? There will be zero data loss if a failure happens to the primary database, because all the all the transactions have been received and committed to the standby database. No data loss is involved. On the other side, the performance will be would be affected will be hit because for each transaction it should wait for the redo block to be sent through the network to the primary database uh, sorry to the standby database and up and saved before uh, it commits the transaction when you use asynchronous redo transport the primary database doesn't wait for the standby database to receive and save the block it will commit the transaction straight away this way, there will be nearly zero performance impact by this architecture, by the data guard architecture. Now, the disadvantage, of course, is that data loss. You would, there will, there, you would lose some data if failure happens to the primary database. So, which one to use? It depends on your uh, business. It depends on the criticality of your application. If it doesn't allow data loss, you have to consider using the sync. I think in this case, you have to uh, find a way to uh, reduce the performance to minimum. If your application or your business allows data loss, in this case, you have to study the amount of the data that you would lose and uh, go on from there. This happens in uh, the planning stage when you configure data card. Data Guard can operate into three modes, maximum performance, maximum availability, and maximum protection. When, you, when the Data Guard operates in maximum performance mode, the priority is given to the performance. And in this case, it uses a synchronous redo transport. This is very obvious because the, the primary database doesn't wait for the standby database to receive to receive the redo log and it operates as normal, so the performance will be will not be affected. But in this case, the application should should be tolerant to data loss. The second mode is called maximum availability. Maximum with when maximum availability is in operation, priority is given to availability and then to the data protection. What does that mean? In normal operation, the primary database will work in a sync redo transport, which means it will wait for the redo block to be received and saved by the standby database. However, if the standby database becomes unavailable because of a network problem or because of a hardware failure, the, stand, the primary database will wait for a while and eventually it will proceed its operation to not stop. When you use maximum protection, it is very similar to the maximum availability. Again, it will use sync, redo transport, which means there is no, uh, there is no data loss. But if the standby database is un becomes unavailable, the primary database will hang and eventually it will abort. It will shut down. So it doesn't allow under any case any data loss. All the transactions should be committed on both databases, the primary database and the standby database. Because of that, usually when we configure data guard to operate in maximum protection mode, we would configure two standby databases so that if one of them goes down, it will not stop the uh, system from operating. So that's it for this lecture. We talked about uh, the processes involved, LNS, RFS, and apply services processes. We talked about types of data guard services. They were uh, redo transport services, apply services, and role transitions. We will talk about role transitions in the, in the next uh, lecture. Uh, then we talked about types of standby, standby databases. Remember, we have two that standby databases. Physical standby databases, which allows only read only, uh, which allows only read only operations, and uh, f logical standby database, which, which allows uh, read write operations. And finally, we talked about data guard protection. We remember we have three of them, maximum, 
performance, maximum availability, and finally, maximum protection. We will talk more about Oracle Data Guard concepts in the next lecture. See you there. Thank you.